make sure. All right, so going into the game, we have Knights Gaming, Moby One spawning as the Orange Protoss on Cloud Kingdom in the top right. Yeah, and uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got the, again, Pink Zerg. His name is Stormy, represents the clan STG. This is the second Knights Gaming uh, member that he's going to be facing off in a row as well. So will he be able to snipe off two players on this team, or is he finally going to get taken out by by Knights Gaming person who can get some revenge for the for the last game? Yeah, might be. Proxy incoming. Wait a minute, is he serious about this? <laughs> of course he's not. He's building a pylon inside his base. <laughs> I was no. like, what the? <laughs> yeah, that would be the slowest proxy ever. Ever in history of StarCraft. I know, I know. Mind games, man, mind games. So, um, I have seen this guy actually go for a 15 hatch in a ZVP matchup before. And, uh, well, it's just an in base for. Uh, for uh, Moby Wan, so nothing uh, all that much out of the ordinary, I have to say. No, it is uh, it is a build that's been... I think Parting started doing it, mm -hmm. and then it got very much popularized by Grubby. So yep. true. Like it, it has been proven by some of the best in the world to be a very, very good one. And uh, he's also gone for the... I believe that this is the best way that you can set up your patrol pattern when it comes to keeping your probe alive for as long as possible. I heard someone say it, that if you do it in, uh, I think it's an octagon. No, a hexagon with a patrol. No, he loses probe while I'm speaking. But if you have the patrol in a hexagon uh, without completing it, it is going to be the most effective way to just patrol your probe True. and keep it alive for as long as possible. All right, so... Uh... <clears throat> So we do have the expansion going down for uh, Moby One as well as a Storm. Are there any Moby One fans in the house? Yeah, two minutes from now. <laughs> are there any? Two minutes from now. Are there any Moby One fans? We do have the gateway finally going down. You know, this is the disadvantage of this build basically by having to place that second phylon because you need that cannon in the wall. Uh, you delay your gateway uh, by a little bit, but not by much. I mean, uh, and um, the one reason why you do this is that it's easier to hold off 6 pools, 10 pools, and all that good jazz when you have your forge in base, because you don't have to give it up. Even if you lose your natural, uh, meaning you have to cancel it, you still have to have your forge inside your base, and you can re-expand later on if you choose so. So, third base going up, 4 storm, uh, not, has not been scouted by Moby1. Um, and he should be sending out units to scout for that third. And there's the Zealot. Yeah, I wonder what Moby One's response to this is going to be. Basically, you have two different types of responses. Either you could be greedy and expand by yourself, or he'll start setting up some type of harassment, which uh, should then, of course, be something along the lines of Warp Prism or perhaps a Phoenix Play or something like that. Because when the Zerg goes for triple hatchery like this, you cannot just leave him alone and you know leave him to his own devices. Because after a couple of minutes' time, he's going to have three fully saturated bases, and then two more minutes go, ba go by, and or at least it feels like it, and then you've got 150 watches on your doorstep. And you don't really want to be there. I know it's not mathematically sound to have 150 roaches, but trust me, it feels like <laughs> feels 150 like 150. Roaches. I know. <laughs> there are so, a lot of roaches. Uh, after cancelling the Zod initially, uh, queuing it up again, and we do have a Twilight Council. Yeah, wow, I'm a that. really big fan of this placement. It's going to be rather hard for Storm to scout this now. Let us see if this is actually for DTs or if this is for uh, some sort of blink play or maybe... Oh yeah, judging by the timing it probably is just for the continuous plus two, so more likely blink play than um, uh, than a DT play. Well, he's got enough gas to place down the DT shrine though. Yeah, and he's he does have a, uh, a probe out on the map which is uh, looking to build a proxy panel maybe. So maybe he will be doing both, going with DTs and Blink at the same time. Blink has Something's not been going, queued up yet. A probe was going back behind there, another probe is going back there and we see the DT shrine. 
Lovely stuff. If you want to shine, you will most certainly go Dark Shrine. Of course. This is this is absolutely the way if you want to be a big baller. It has not been scattered by the Zerg either. Uh, Storm should really be using his second overlord in the in the natural because so far he has not seen anything. This first overlord though will get all the scouting information that Storm thinks he can get. And uh, well, we have two more additional pylons being built. That zealot was spotted though, and the direction that was heading in, and that probe must have been spotted as well. Now it's going to be still some time before the shrine is up, uh, almost a minute. Uh, but, um, yeah, the DTs should be on their way. Uh, a little bit of a zealot harassment now that the plus one is done. This queen will have to be pulled back. Yeah, but there's a lot of zerglings here for defenses. Now the question is, the evil chamber is finishing. Will we see any spore crawlers being built? A lot of roaches being produced. There's a storm overreacting to this uh, quite a bit, I have to say. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what is actually going to happen. Because these... Roaches are still going to take a lot of damage from the Zealots if they don't get macro. We've got DTs on the way and we've got a lair finished up for Storm, however, so we can morph Overlord as soon as he realizes what's going on. But by then it could be too late because three DTs will kill off a hatchery before an Overlord has the time to, to actually morph on in. Two of them not quite going to be able to do so, but he's going to chase everything away so the third is absolutely going to be going down. It's just a matter of time how, how much damage he's going to be allowed to do with this. He's targeting down the natural hatcher as well. Do not think that that will go down and no, it absolutely will not. He's going to lose two more Ooh, DTs. Losing three DTs, that is not the way you want to be handling your DTs. But this one in the main of the Zerg is going to go ahead and kill probes. He's even microing it so it is. So he is sure he's getting those probes. And wow, this DT actually does get nine, ten kills before he's taken out the total number of drones killed was exactly that 10 and plus one more but the more important thing is a third being taken out of the game well if he did not lose those three DTs he would have been in a fantastic spot right now uh, switching into immortal production and uh, getting that well actually not getting that plus two instead getting more gates we still don't have any blink on the way which would be or an or charge which would be the natural transition out of this into charge Larkon with plus two or maybe even plus three and a very quick follow-up push uh, as it is well Moby one seems to be doing absolutely nothing not even taking his third base but uh, he does have a lot of probes to his name yeah, he's going up to the eighth gate as well, and I wouldn't be too surprised if he starts moving out after the second Immortal comes out, because now the gateways have finished up. He is going to lose his forward pylons, however, so we will need to reproduce them. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's starting to look like he's going to go from the DT harassment in towards some type of an all-in play, because as you said earlier, Ron, the, uh, the expansion is non-existent for Moby 1 right now, and he's starting to move out a little bit towards this so it might just be a very very safe expansion the one zergling has gone down but this could also just be a mind trick i've seen this from a lot of protoss when they mm -hmm. they build their their third but they don't actually saturate it but with the cannon there it does absolutely feel like he's going to be wanting to go in towards that uh, that third base and going into a macro game right now and there we have the third base going down uh i have to say that i'm really 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 confused by uh by Mobivan's choice of neither getting blink nor charge and or continuing his upgrades. He's getting the robotics bay right now and uh, you know um, do we actually have any observers out on the map for him? Yeah it's in the middle of the map it's uh, keeping an eye out for the center and Storm he's looking like he wants to really uh, pressure this third maybe judging by the number of units he even maybe wants to kill it. Now he's attacking with roaches and lings now he does have overseers with him, which means DTs will be largely useless as long as uh, the overseer is uh, alive. But look at all these sentries, look at how much energy they have. I think uh, Moby One is just fine defending this location. Yeah, he should be. But with the 17 extra roaches that are coming on out, it's, it's going to be fairly hard to do. So we've got some roaches moving on towards the natural. But with them being there, they're just going to be taking up a lot of the time, which would allow the counterattack to go towards the third. It's fine. It gets cancelled in the nick of time, though. 
so not too much loss there. The third would absolutely have gone down. A lot of roaches have been killed off in the natural. And uh, I don't really know who went out victorious from this trade. We see a couple of changelings being killed off. Well, I think Mobi One is definitely ahead. I mean, what? He did not lose any units in his army. He managed to force field these roaches trying to sneak into the natural very, very handily and took out every single one of them without incurring any damage whatsoever. And. Uh, Storm was not able to kill that third base as it did get cancelled. So I think he's definitely in uh, the lead right now. Now the thing is that we do have an infestation pit, pathogen glands on the way, but as I said, Mobi One already has extended thermal lands on the way as well. Preemptive force loads going down. Tries oh, to the Colossal could die in the natural. Yeah, it will die. It will die because there's nothing that can save them. And uh, really, finishing this second wall off is of utmost importance right now for Moby One so that he can stop uh, those Roaches from getting uh, at him from that side. Another attack at the third base, but that is going to be just fine with all those uh, force tools being there. He has to be careful though, and needs to force build again. Yeah, another force field ha another one of force fields have gone down, but the energy on the sentries are starting to dwindle out. He will be able to get one or two more rounds, most likely two of them. So he has thwarted that attack again. He will need to finish off that uh, that wall up down by the natural, as you said earlier on, and it is of utmost importance to get that done. The attack sequence for Storm should more or less have been, you know, stopped by now. He is, however, up on quad gas, which should be enough for him to start working towards that uh, that greatest biotech. And just as I say it, we see Hive and Spire on their way together right now, and a couple of investors in the works as well. Now Storm has to pause the game. We can finally see another one of the new lovely features, which is you're allowed to move around when a player pauses the game. Yeah, and I just have to say, uh, I just have to check if if I have any drop frames. No, unfortunately not. Ah, that would be fortunately, I'd say. <laughs> no dropped frames, but uh, the stream is lagging, apparently. Is it lagging for you as well? Uh, no. No, it's not? No, stream is just fine for me. Okay. Because uh, Frank PM'd me that he has had a lag spikes for uh, for the past two minutes or so. So I don't know what's, what's going on there. Um... Might be that. Wait a minute. Let me just move this to the side so that my connection is a little bit weird. But okay, it's, yeah. it's showing green all the time. All right. Well, we're back in the game again. They have on post a couple of Zerglings trying to move in towards the third base, but they will get thwarted by the Colossi and the rest of the army. It, it feels like Moby One should try to get himself a fourth base fairly soon. He is extremely oversaturated on uh, you know most of his bases. He's got 30. Uh, probes mining minerals on the third, so he could just send at the very least six of them down towards the fourth base, and he would actually increase his mineral income that way. How silly that now ever might sound. The great spice mm -hmm. should be able to start morphing in just a couple of seconds time, and the spine crawler forest has now begun. It has, and uh, well. You know, the fourth for Storm has been up for quite some time, but not really saturated. I mean, by attacking constantly into Mobi One, Storm was spending all his larva on units before he was uh, at his maximum drone count, and, uh, and he still is not there. Look at this 71 uh, drones. Now, granted, some of those, or a lot of those, should I say, have been turned into spine crawlers just recently, but I don't think that Storm has enough right now. I mean, Mobi One is pushing in. His upgrades are at 2 0 compared to 1 1 of Storm. That's not a position you want to be into. There's only one Colossus, so all those Craptors that are being produced will not be all that uh, uh, useful. But we do have a lot of Fungals as well, and uh, Mobi One has to be careful to spread his army just right. Storm is not letting him go off that easily. He is. Uh, he is intent on preventing his turf. Nice force fields going down, preventing more fungals, but the army is already chain locked. Yeah, and he's dubbing a couple of infested Terrans over the wall as well. This should be killed off fairly soon. The Corrupt is doing absolutely nothing with no more Colossi up there, and Mobi One actually taps out before we get to see any real engagements, but I guess he just felt the pressure was too high and. I mean, he knew that the greatest fight should be on his way, but actually it wasn't just yet, so... I don't really know how I feel about that GG timing. It feels kind of Idra-esque.